Welcome to the GCN Tech Show. This week we've got loads. Bling, new Italian shoes, pedals that can take any kind of cleat, a car wash for your bikes, your upgrades, the bike vault, and our main talking point. What tech can we stop Ollie getting dropped with? We'll begin with the poll from last week, which was, if the weather's bad, do you prefer to ride indoors or outdoors? And... Well, overwhelmingly, 60% said indoors. I want to stay warm um, rather than outdoors is free. I voted for indoors, that's for I sure. did, yeah. as well. Um, Don't blame me. Pretty conclusive, that, yeah. I think. Um, so on to our main talking point this week, which is that tech that can hopefully stop me getting dropped again and enable us to beat Cy on his yeah. TT bike, yeah, that's more right. importantly. The first thing that you highlighted and was your first excuse was that you weren't using an aero bike. You know, I don't know why you weren't, but anyway, we've been over this. And it's it would have helped you out. And I've looked at the ride data, um, and I averaged just over 300 watts for that 13-minute effort, which I'm pretty sure you can easily achieve that. That's not something you can't do. And on yeah. top of that, you're also at least five kilograms lighter than me. At least. Now, while I agree with all of the excellent points that you've, <laughs> that you've just made, yeah. I think irrespective of that, something else that would really help would be a flatter course, as then there's less chance of people surging um, and disrupting the line. Yeah, that, yeah. It, well, irrespective of pacing, I think that it is a clear point. If you'd have used an aero bike, mm. um, some deeper section wheels, for example, you could have made some reasonable savings. I think in the region of, sort of 15 to 20 watts you could have saved, just purely by switching out some of your equipment to something that's more suited for the job. It's not to be sniffed at that. Yeah. Well, well, I'm glad you said that, but I mean, something I have come to realize through my endeavors is that no amount of aero tech is gonna pedal itself. <laughs> so I've, I've been using other forms of tech to try, mm -hmm. and, to try and help me. Yeah. So I've been doing some indoor training workouts that I hope are specifically tailored to meet the physiological demands of a team time trial to better prepare me for it next time. Namely, there's a one called the Team Scream in, in the Sufferfest, so I've been doing that. Frick, well, you really don't want to get dropped, do you? No. no. Would you? <laughs> no, I, I wouldn't, to be honest. I'm pretty glad I did. That was one of, you know what, one of my biggest worries when um, I joined in for three versus one. I was a bit concerned that I was going to get dropped. Anyhow, I've actually been looking at the science and there's a pretty interesting paper on this topic from 2018 that looks into the aerodynamic benefits of team time trials. I know it well. One of my favourites. We actually keep papers like this here in the toilets at GCN Megabase for a bit of light reading when we, when we need it. And uh, in that particular paper they used CFD analyses of team time trial scenarios and then also validated that with uh, wind tunnel testing as well. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And, and what's an important thing to note is they've looked at the position of the riders um, behind each other to see how that affects the drafting. And also, not only the number of riders that you're drafting behind, but also how closely you are spaced between them. Yeah, and the, well, the main take home sort of message that I saw from that paper is that while I was on the front doing my absolute mega hero turn for the team, uh, you were probably doing about 57% less power than me sat on the back. And then you came smashing through. So as I said, it is worth being mindful of the distance behind the rider in front, because as you can see on the chart, if you're 0.15 meters behind the rider in front, there's significantly less drag than if you're half a meter behind them. When well, that is where you need to be. <laughs> and another, another really interesting point is actually that in a four person team time trial lineup, which is obviously what we had, the fourth person is the person that experiences the lowest amount of drag, and that's where you need to ride. The, la the last person, it's oh the most efficient God place to sake. be. <laughs> but it is worth noting that once you get more than four riders, it's actually the person that's second to last which has the most benefit because the last person slots into the group. This would be man five, for example, or person five. So what you're, what you're saying is Manon's going to be five and you want me four. Yeah, if Manon oh, comes okay. into position five, but Manon slotting in is going to make your life easier because position number five reduces the drag on position number four because at that speed, there's a sort of wake that is created by that person, which also the person behind has an impact on position number four, which could be you, reaping the rewards of those aerodynamics. Well, thanks. Anyway, looking at the paper, you can also see that um, sitting second place, you, you're saving, or as a rule of thumb, around 30%, um, you, well, you have to produce 30% less power than 
person yeah. one, yeah. Um, which is hugely significant. And, and that, I mean, that also shows that why it's so hard to attack off the front by riding off the off someone's wheel. Yeah, they're just sitting behind and, you, yeah, easy. And yeah. not attack from, from behind. So when you do see someone just ride someone off their wheel, um, it, it's remarkable. So yeah, in theory, they've. What, what were you saying those savings are for man two? Uh, like 30, 40? They have to do 30% less power. Yeah, so that means person number one has got to do 30% more to drop them. Well, more than, yeah. Yeah, it's a lot, isn't it? Mm. Um, and the interesting thing also, is that even if the riders are all spaced out apart, so if you had one meter between every rider, the fourth place rider is still saving up to 50% like reduction in drag, yeah, which so is like a lot, even with the people spaced out. Yeah, uh, if, uh, I mean, even if we rode, rode ragged then, but stayed yeah. as four people, Yeah. when you consider we lost by two seconds. Yeah, those, those aerodynamic advantages, they all will add up, and like you say, two seconds, that <sighs> could have been the difference. Yeah. What's really interesting to me though is the average drag experienced by all the riders in the group. Yeah. So, if you have three riders, they experience on, on average 70% of the drag of a lone rider. Yeah. But if you have four riders, they experience 64% on average, each one of them, yeah. of the drag of a lone rider. That's a so, big saving. Yeah, so by, drop, by dropping me, like you, you all had to do more work. So it quite literally is purely your fault that Sai still beat us. <sighs> <It's> a... <laughs> well, I mean, well, you could argue that because even if I'd only done one turn, if I'd then stayed in the group, you all would have had to have done less effort throughout yeah. the entire ride. You're not helping yourself on out. The back. Well, yeah, but then, you know, if we stayed as a four, considering we only lost by two seconds. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, but it is worth pointing out that this model doesn't um, it doesn't account for variations in riders and equipment. So the, the model is assuming that the four riders are of the same size, the same position, the same bikes. So it's a little bit flawed in that, well not flawed, but there's going to be some adjustments for the real world situation. Yeah, there. size yeah. on a TT bike, we're on road bikes. Um, we're all different sizes as well, you know, yeah. me and Con are pretty tall guys, Hank obviously considerably smaller. So, yeah. Yeah. It is useful information though. Uh, very, very, it's cool to look at, isn't it? Very yeah. cool. <laughs> and, and, and I think the other thing is, you know, if we look at then the Psy is, is averaging around 350 watts for the course. Yeah. yeah. And we know from, you know, previous experience in wind tunnels with the kind of setup he's got over the kind of setup we've all got for a same size rider, he's, he's probably saving around like 80, 90 watts. Yeah, there's a lot of savings between normal and time trial equipment, isn't there? Yeah. yeah. So. And, and then if you look, therefore, at us in a group of four, yeah. working if we say then that we're saving 64 or we're only having to do 64 percent of, of, of what size we do on our own yeah um we actually then it comes out as being around sort of 285 watts yeah. average yeah. so that's that's obviously like we was talking about accounting for the model accounts for everyone on the same equipment size so if we if that's the science behind it Really, the 300 watt marker should be achievable, shouldn't it? Yes, and I think we should be able to, to beat him if we can ride efficiently. The only difference is, is of course, Connor um, is going to be still having to produce over 400 watts. Yeah, I mean, last time he still tried, <laughs> <laughs> last time he still tried keeping his winter kit on. Yeah, I know, yeah. ridiculous. But it does beg the question: What if Sai still beats us? Well, if you look at this paper, it says that if you have a group of seven, eight, or nine riders, then the average drag experienced by each rider is. Well, about half, about 50% that of a lone rider. So uh, if we do lose, we just get two more people and then we'll definitely win. But I think the biggest thing though, could be changing the course to something that's a bit more suited and would work well in a group. Yeah, and I, I agree with that. But I think we should have a poll, okay? Um, we wanna ask you guys, what do you think is the best way for us to try and beat Psy? Um, a less technical course, better teamwork, yeah. an aero bike for me, uh, five riders or give it up. It can't be done. Mm, interesting. But what about if Sai gets himself a disc wheel or even some more time trial goodies? He might go even faster and be even more aero. Mm -hmm. Right, it's now time for hot tech. And first up this week, Trek have been hit with a lawsuit about their wave cell helmet technology. 
Yeah, interesting story this, which our friends over at Cycling Tips have reported on. And apparently the Trek Bicycle Corporation was recently presented with a proposed class action lawsuit alleging that it misleads customers into believing that its Bontrager wave cell helmets protect against concussions more than the average helmet and that it conducted unreliable research for marketing purposes. Um, and, well, according to the suit, Trek's claims uh, were based on misleading tests that were conducted by parties that had a, a direct financial interest uh, in, in the technology, and therefore that you know, presents significant conflicts of interest. And in addition, the suit says that the tests were performed on modified traditional helmets, uh, which you know, were not actual production models, and so the results aren't applicable to the products that are actually available to purchase. Um, so, you know, make of that what you will. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. But nevertheless, though, Trek say they do believe in their wave cell technology and have um, said that they're sort of prepared to demonstrate this technology in court. And Trek say that they believe in the standards behind their Bontrager technology and their wave cell helmets. And according to a statement provided to Cycling Tips, this, little, this lawsuit is without merit and we will vigorously defend against it. The plaintiff has not made an allegation of physical injury and Trek will continue to responsibly promote and improve this innovation in new helmet technology. Yeah, well, I guess we'll just have to follow this and see how it develops yeah. and then rest assured we'll, uh, we'll, report, we'll report on it as it develops here on the show. Anyway, something interesting we've got coming up next. And DMT have made their top-end knitted KR1 shoe that features the DMT logo embossed with Swarovski crystals. What do you make of that? Like that is very blue. <laughs> very blue. Isn't it? These yeah. shoes are pretty interesting though. So they have a knitted construction, um, which is, according to DMT, said to improve the, the, the fit of the shoe, especially around the ankle. You see it goes quite high, yeah. and it's also helped to secure your foot better and eliminate pressure points, which I think is quite interesting. I've not tried a shoe like that before, but it's certainly intriguing. And uh, I should point out as well, if the bling uh, crystal look isn't for you, and yeah. they, they do do them in uh, white, black, and orange yeah, as well. Better. Maybe a bit more run of the mill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some hot new pedal tech now, and this is a new product called Fit5, and it's a pedal that's designed to accommodate five different cleat types, including an adapter that can go on it so that you can just use your flat trainers on it. And we think it's a really, really cool uh, idea. And before you all start screaming at your <laughs> screens right now, saying, what are you on about? That's rubbish. I'm never putting that on my bike. Well, hold your horses because it's not designed to go on your bike. In fact, the, the makers themselves say, we don't advise that you put this on your bike outside because the clearance isn't that great on the pedal. You'd probably clip a pedal when you went around a corner. Yeah, however, they are great for indoor bikes if they're shared use, for example, or bikes that are used in a gym, for example, because they can be fitted on. It doesn't matter where, what design pedals you've got because it's a problem that I've had in the past. Before I had a power meter, I have headed down to the gym to try and use one of their watt bikes. And one of the first things I wanted to do was take their pedals off and put mine on so I could use my, my shoes and cycling shoes. But with these pedal systems, it wouldn't be a problem. So it's, it's ideal for that application, really. Yes, uh, and to be more specific, the, the pedals it can accommodate are Shimano um, SL, uh, SPD SL road cleats, the Look 3 Bolt um, Kio and Delta yeah. cleats as well. And then the other side, you've got the Shimano or Look 2 Bolt mountain bike cleat and then the flat pedal as well. And they've also been beefed up yeah. so that they're designed for heavy duty use. Um, they're not super lightweight product. You know, they're designed for sort of 12 hour a day heavy Big endurance gym sessions. Use. Yeah, I mean, they've <laughs> got, you know, all the sort of gym they got bigger, bigger axles and bigger bearings in them, haven't they? Jumping yeah. on there. Yeah, to make <laughs> <laughs> dropping <laughs> watt bombs that we can only dream of. Yeah. Um, but yes, yeah, so they've got bigger axles, like you say, and, and beefed up bearings and things as well to make them super durable. That's look pretty good. Mm. And our final piece of hot tech this week is some cleaning tech, and it's a bike wash system from KKE, and it's effectively a car wash that's designed for your bikes. Pretty I, cool. I feel I need this in my life. <laughs> yeah. Don't know about you. It's kind of partly intended for motorbikes as well as bikes, so it has got dual purpose. You know, it could be good if you've got a motorbike as well. Mm. And um, it kind of goes over the top of the bike um, and uses various different jets at different angles to clean the bike and then can dry off as well, crucially. Oh, I want one. Very cool. Yeah. More hot tech next, next week. week. <laughs> Cha ching It's now time for screw riding upgrades by upgrades. Yeah, where you submit evidence. It can be images, videos, 
smells of the upgrades that you've made to your bikes or cycling lives for the chance to win the ultimate prize, a GCN water bottle. And you submit uh, your upgrades and the evidence of them in the GCN app. So let's see, first up, how uh, the two upgrades got on last week um, and who was the best. So we had Paul O'Brien uh, and his 70s Rally Caprice uh, uh, and he was up against XZXGCT3NEI, basically Stuart, <laughs> and that was his uh, Vitus Razor winter bike. Vitus. Oh, Vitus. I say it every time. Yeah. Sorry. It's cl it was close, this one. Yeah. 52% goes to, to uh, Stuart. There you go. Uh, very close. Both I can see here. I can see here that you, um, you actually voted for the other one. I did, yeah. 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 <laughs> anyway, uh, there you go. Um, who have we got up uh, this week? Um, so first up, we've got Mark Bayer, who says he was itching to get out on the trails on a gravel bike, but nothing was as aggressive as he was looking for. He then found a 2014 Scott Scale Carbon XC bike, and he says it turns out that last year's XC bike is this year's gravel bike, which is pretty cool. Um, great on rides, gets rowdy, but still composed on the tarmac. He's That's really cool. Has he custom painted that? Yeah, he says he's um, upgraded the drivetrain, brakes, fulcrum wheels, and painted it all up with a custom paint job. It's proper, like, fluoro, isn't it? It's very, very bright. Pretty, like, tie-dye. Yeah, kind of I was going to say it game. looks a little bit like um, the Orbea Mayo that um, Connor created. It does. <laughs> yeah, it does. A little yeah. bit like that. Connor would love this. Okay, so that's pretty cool, but who is he up against? Well... It's a great one. It's from Adrian Fleiser, who says he's been inspired by my budget TT bike series. Very cool. And decided to get uh, one of those frames and do it himself. So he's got that Cervelo P1 frame that I got, that amazing yeah. aluminium frame. I just think they look really good. But then he's totally gone to town on it. So he's put 105 rear mech on, new rear mech. Proper good, gone like you know 11 speed on there, and then he's, other people. yeah, rotor chain set, some new brakes, good choice, good choice, uh, physique tritone uh, saddle, and then he's got got some nice deep wheels on there and a new uh, zip cockpit, uh, kept the same vision stem, which is nice. Well, anyway, he managed to keep the whole cost of that build down to under a thousand euros. I think that is mega. That is like proper cool, isn't it? Well, I think I can tell which bike's going to be getting your vote this week. Yeah. Anyway, it's not up to us. Yeah. You guys vote. You can click on the on the poll, and uh, you decide who wins. Time now for the bike vault, where you submit pictures of your bikes, and we judge them to be either nice or super, or super nice. nice. And if they're super nice, Alex rings the bell, and they get committed to the bike vault for eternity. Uh, you can also play along at home by voting in the GCN app on all the bikes that we feature. Who's up first? Very good, that. First up is Vary SVV with their yeah. Canyon Grail 2020. Crossing a bog. Crossing a bog. Reminds me of the bog of eternal stench in Labyrinth. Interesting. <laughs> uh, right, what are we saying on this? I'm saying very, I've, very oh, interesting. I've got a lot of issues with this. I mean, I, can un I, I appreciate the unconventional angle Sometimes that can work. Yeah, we've we've picked some good ones out for their photographic, you know. Yeah, I mean, there's a good kind of the image, the composition flows, there's a nice sense of perspective and depth. Yeah, that's but it. he's resting the bike on the derailleur cage. Yeah, it's not great, is it? It's not good. I mean, that's, that's just abhorrent to my eyes. Full and of accessories. What is, I mean, there's a dork disc on the cassette. There's... Spoke reflectors. What are, the, what are spoke reflectors? What is that? Get some lights. Yeah. Oh. Um, should I rule you out for a super nice on this one? It's a nice. Yeah, nice one. God. Next, what we got? Uh, R.C. Lee, or maybe um, his name is Rick Lee, um, has got this uh, Schwinn Corvette. What do you make of that? I think it's cool, that's for sure. Yeah. That is cool, isn't it? White wall tyres. I mean... I would love to go cruising around a seaside resort aboard that. That looks cool. It's a super nice. It's a super nice. Yeah. Very good. Next up, we have got... You Victorly. You Victorly. Uh, morning ride on the peak on Hong Kong Island with his um, Pinero F8 2016. That is a cool picture. Who was national champ then? Is that Kenya? Yeah, I, it looks I like it's... a bit of a bigger bike for him. 
But either way, it is very much a like British um, national championship inspired paint scheme. Ben Swift? No. Anyway. Oh. Yeah, I'm feeling it. My yeah. quiz knowledge here. Who the hell was national champ back then? I mean, if Wikipedia doesn't know, who's going to know? Oh, Ken Yuk was under 23. Men's elite champion in 2008, Rob Hales. Well, he hasn't said this from the British national champion. <laughs> We're just assuming it is. <laughs> I don't even think the Pinarello F8, the Pinarello F8 wasn't around in... Two... Hang on, where have we got 2008 from? 16. Oh, 26, oh, for God, I was going to say, like, what? <laughs> They were still on like Dogma Thinks back in 28, 2008. It's on 16. Oh, then that's Kenyuk. Okay. I'm going Kenyuk. Was it Abergavenny? Abigave Stockton, isn't it? Stockton? No way did he win at Stockton. Hang on. Where's Stock the Stockton was results? the one that Adam Blythe won at. I think it was the year before Abergavenny. Abergav Kenyuk was 2015. Right, hang on. Do we have to have this information in it? I need to know now. Oh, Blythe. That makes no sense. Um, well, it does. It is Kenya. It is Kenya. It's Kenya. It's Kenya's bike, because it was that model year. Okay, so cut there, seamlessly drop in, so it makes it look like I know the answer without having to look it up. Pinarello F8 2016. Yeah, well, that's clearly the bike of Peter Kenya. Because although it's 2016, he won the Nationals in 2015. So that's kind of like continuing on. So you could be thrown off thinking it was it was um, not his bike and it, was, and it was actually Blythe's bike because he won in 2016. But yeah, that's... that's I, for a, one, a, a am very impressed. I, for one, am very impressed by your bike general knowledge. Yeah. Hmm, very good. Yeah. Off the cuff as well. Yeah. Um, but bike vault submission, it's pretty cool. We've got... Oh, very nice, isn't it? Not quite Biggie Smalls, like well presented. He's lined up his tyre valves though. Yeah. And it's a cracking location. And he's got his, his, I can see his Rafa bottle. Hasn't quite moved that quite out of shot. Yeah, he's tried. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll accept that because <laughs> yeah. the thought was there. It's the thought that counts. Yeah. I like, the, I like the way he's got the city in the background. That really, yeah. that, that looks fantastic. I'm going to call this early. I'm yeah. going in super nice. Uh, I think, I mean, that is a super nice, isn't it? Yeah. I really like that bar tape. I'm going to ring it. On. I'm going to ring it. Weird saddle though. Anyway, um, next we have from T6BQ3YF7NF. That could be his Wi Fi password. <laughs> He's accidentally <laughs> copied and pasted it. Yeah. <laughs> what mic have they got though? Uh, Specialized S Works SL6. What on earth? Uh, whoa. Oh, we've got a major error in the bike roll here. Oh, God. What is that? Uh, Presumably there is the rest of the bike somewhere there. Nice. Yeah, just a nice. I think we move on and forget that ever existed. Yeah. Yeah. Next up, we've got user um, 746531. Oh, Interesting. Catchy. Yeah. The last row was quite enjoyable as it was a forest road, quiet and free from traffic, um, which is with their GTR Series 5 2012. Ooh, that is a nice bike. Quite a cool bike. It is a nice bike. But um, in terms of bike vault submissions, they've not done very well. No, I mean, you're in, you look like you're at home, so there's no excuse for kind of not removing accessories. Uh, but in addition to the accessories that you normally have on your bike, you've decided to use it as some kind Laundry. of like clothes drying rack. Yeah. Um, yeah, we, we can't condone this kind of behavior. That bike is definitely Bike vault worthy, but it does not present as well. Yeah, I spotted, which is quite cool. Mm. It's got a homemade bike stand made out of um, plastic um, plumbing tubing. That is cool. Yeah, that's cool. That is cool. Yeah. Nice though. Yeah. Um, and last this week, K Man 768 has submitted his Condor Baraki. What do you make of that? Next to a cattle grid. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, really cool picture, as we were saying earlier, the perspective of this picture is very good. Yes. And the bike, pretty cool. We've got um, wheels and tyres lined up, cranks unfortunately not level, but they're used to support the bike, so I think we could probably let that one slide this time. I am a fan of the traditional drop bar on that bike. You don't see many traditional drops. Big deep drops. drop. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of cool, isn't it? Very cool. You don't see many. Most people have compact bars this time. Um, Yes, I... Biggie Smalls, no accessories, I think no his, chimney. his wheels could be a bit cleaner, but given that he's ridden such a nice place and it is winter and the roads are filthy, I'm willing to forgive it. Uh, I, I think that's a, a super nice. A super nice for me. Here we go. 
More Bike Vault next week. Unfortunately, that's it for this week. So that's another GCN Tech Show done. Yeah, but fear not, we'll be back next week with all the latest and greatest tech. And in the meantime, we've got a new book out, the GCN Essential Guide to Bike Maintenance. So if you want to learn how to repair your bike or if you've got any problems, I mean, this is like the essential book, we hope, for, for every home mechanic. So make sure you go check that out. It's available in the GCN shop. Right, um, like and subscribe. Bye. See you later.